Hi! In this video, we'll be talking about packets and protocols, and this is the really the last piece of the puzzle for how the internet works. So in this video, we'll really be putting together the entire story, start to finish, of how the internet works. And that involves packets and protocols. So first, let's do a quick recap. We know that the internet is all about sending digital information. It's about getting binary information from one computer to another on the same network. So how do these two computers find each other? Well, we have addresses for every computer on the internet. We have a unique address, and that is known as an internet protocol address, an IP address. Now, originally we had IPv4, and that was four numbers between zero and 255. Turns out that wasn't enough combinations, so we're starting to upgrade to IPv6, which actually is 32 different hexadecimal digits, so that's way more combinations. So every device on the internet has a unique IP address, and that's how two computers find each other. The problem is, no one wants to remember these IP addresses. These aren't very human readable. So we use the DNS system, the domain name system, in order to associate a domain, a human readable domain, with an IP address. For example, google.com might map to 172.217.18.174. So every domain is associated with an IP address for a website. So that's how we find the computer that we want to send information to. What does that look like? When the information is sent, how does it get across the network? Well, this is where routing comes in. The internet is really just a massive network of various routers, each of which are connected to a few other routers. So if we want to get information all the way from a computer on the left to a computer on the right, it'll hop between many routers on the way. And this is nice because we have several different paths to the same destination. That way, if one router breaks, that's fine. There's, there's redundancy in the system. We can take multiple paths. So if one router breaks, there's still going to exist another path. This is also very scalable because it's easy to add and remove routers from the system. You just have to connect it to a few other routers and the system continues to work. So that's routing. So we know how information gets from point A to point B, but what exactly does that information look like? What is being sent? How are those zeros and ones actually set up? Well, introducing packets. All data sent over the internet is broken down into several packets. Packets are the tiny units of data that are sent over the network. So all data is broken down into packets. And think about it this way. Let's, let's say you had to send something really big across the country. Let's say you built a house in Texas and you needed that house to get all the way to California. You wouldn't pick up that entire house, put it on a truck and send it to California. You would break down that house into several different pieces, put it on several different trucks, and then all of those trucks would drive to the same final destination. And each one could possibly take a different path as well. Once it arrives at the destination, the house would be reconstructed from these pieces. So this is exactly how the internet works. If we wanted to send a picture of Carol across the internet, that picture would actually get broken down into several different pieces. Each of those pieces would get put inside its own packet, and then those packets would be sent across the network, routed through the internet. Now these packets need to be labeled with metadata in order for the routing to work. Things like the from address, the to address, how big it is. But if a router receives a packet, it needs to know where it's going. It needs to know the final destination. So that's why we label it with a from address and a to address. Just like you would mail something through the postal service, you need a from address and a to address. So once these packets arrive at their final destination, they are pieced back together, and then we have our picture of Carol. So the layout of a packet is defined by a protocol. All computers on the internet, all devices, need to agree to set up their packets in the same way so that computers on either end can understand what's inside. And this protocol is the internet protocol. So, the, so IP not only assigns an address to every computer on the internet, it also defines the layout of a packet. So IP standardizes the layout of all packets, and it says that all packets must have a destination IP address, a from IP address, and the actual data being sent. So with IP alone, with just the internet protocol, this gives each device on a network an IP address and defines the layout of a packet. With just IP, two computers on a network can send single packets to each other. But what happens if we want to send multiple packets? Well, we're going to need a new protocol for this. Introducing the Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP. So TCP is a protocol that allows for sending multiple packets between two computers. So TCP checks that all the packets made it and that they can be put together in the proper order once they arrive. So with, with just IP packets, all we had for metadata was the from address, the to address, and the size. With TCP, we actually add one more thing, which is the packet number. We say this must come first, this must come second, this must come third, this must come fourth. So TCP adds a packet number to each packet, and that way we can track what order they're supposed to come in. 
Now, when we're sending packets across the internet, we're almost always using TCP and IP together. So we usually say TCP slash IP. This is the general protocol. We use TCP IP packets. So now that the packets are labeled with a number, once they arrive, if they're out of order, it's okay, we have a number. We know how to put them back together because we have the proper order. This is also useful because let's say one of the packets doesn't make it, let's say one of the routers crashes and one packet doesn't make it, it's okay, we're missing a number. So TCP will re-request that missing packet. Once all the packets arrive, we have their order number so we know how to put them back together and they're pieced back together to create the final result. So TCP and IP define metadata about the information being sent. They say that all packets must have a to address, a from address, the size of the message, and the order number, what order this packet should come in. So that's how we get packets across the internet. But how is the actual data structured inside the packet? What, what exactly are we sending? Well, introducing HTTP. So HTTP is a protocol that standardizes the language for talking to web servers and receiving web resources from web servers. It is a system, a protocol, for all computers to buy into so we can establish a common language for requesting and receiving web resources. So what does this look like? So HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Now we've seen hypertext before. What, what, is, what is hypertext? If you remember, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So really this protocol, HTTP, defines how computers can request and receive hypertext information. So what does this look like? Well, Every time you're requesting a web page or an image or a video from the internet, there is an HTTP request and an HTTP response. So your computer isn't really saying, hey, example.com, can you send me your homepage.html file, please? It's not saying that in plain English. It's constructing a message defined by the protocol HTTP. So it constructs an HTTP request, and this is what it looks like. HTTP defines this layout. It, might, it says, well, okay, the first line is going to say exactly what resource you're requesting. The third line will say what kind of content type you're requesting. The fourth line, what type of language. And if every device buys into this protocol, then every device can understand this request. So once that request makes it to the example.com server, a program will accept this HTTP request as input, be able to parse the information out of it, get the proper information out of it because it knows how it's laid out, and then it will find inside the server the proper resource to return. So it'll say, oh, yeah, I have that file, homepage.html, here you go, I'll send it back to you. But it doesn't say that in English, it says it using HTTP. So it'll, it'll construct an HTTP response that might look like this. The first line will have a status number saying, oh yeah, 200, okay, I found it. Third line again will be the content type, fourth line the language, things like this. So altogether, TCP IP, DNS, and routing all work together to send packets across the internet. HTTP makes sure that the information inside the packet can be understood. We're actually packaging that up, we're packaging up that HTTP request inside several different packets. Whew. Okay, that was a lot of information. There's a lot of protocols that go in to sending information from point A to point B across the internet. And it's kind of hard to see how it might all fit together. So. To finish this video, let's look at the story from start to finish. When your computer goes to view a web page, what exactly happens all the way from start to finish? So let, let's see how that story all fits together. So we start with the URL. That is step one. We type in a URL to our browser, or maybe we click a link that produces the URL, or maybe we refresh a page. Either way, it starts with the URL, and that stands for Uniform Resource Locator. That means we're locating a resource that exists somewhere on the internet. Where does it exist? Well, that's defined by the domain. The domain is where in the internet we need to look for the resource. And then after the domain, we have the path. The path is what resource we are requesting. In this case, we are asking example.com for a resource called homepage.html. So from this URL, your computer will actually construct an HTTP request. It'll say, oh, based on this URL, I'm making a request to the host example.com. I'm asking to get homepage.html. I'm asking for a certain content type, a certain content language. That entire layout is defined by the hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP. So now the problem is, where exactly is www.example.com? We don't know the IP address. So to get the IP address, that's where DNS comes in. The domain name system will convert this domain into an actual address. It'll start with the end, start with the com. We'll go to the com domain and ask, hey, where's example? And that will give you the address for example. Then we can go to the example domain and ask, hey, where's www? The example server will give us the location of www, and from there we actually have the final IP address. Let's say it's 5.5.5. .5 .5.
So we have converted this domain into an actual IP address. Now we can actually break up this entire HTTP request into separate packets. So TCP IP will break down this request into several packets and label each packet with the proper metadata. So here we have the to address, the from address, the packet number, and the size. Now each of these packets will separately get sent over the network. They'll probably take different paths. Maybe some of them don't make it. That's fine because at the other end, TCP will check that every packet made it. If not, then the server will request that the missing packets get resent. Let's say it gets sent back over. Great, we have packet one, packet two, and packet three. So now, since the server buys into the same protocol, it knows exactly how to read these packets. It will unpackage them, piece them back together, and, we can, and it can see the original request that came from your computer. So it reads this and says, oh, this computer is asking for homepage.html. Yeah, I got that right here. So the server will take homepage.html and construct an HTTP response out of this. The response will have a code, a status code. In this case, it's 200 stating OK. That means, yes, everything worked. I found it. And the actual HTML file is included with the response. So all of this gets packaged up as an HTTP response. That then gets broken down into packets according to TCP and IP. And then those packets are returned to the sender. We have the address of the sender because that was included in the original request. So these packets will each individually get sent over the network. Maybe some of them don't make it. They're all going to take different paths. TCP will check that all the packets made it. And if not, we request that the missing packets get resent. So there we go. That gets resent. We have packet one, two, and three. And from there, we can reconstruct the original response. And here in the response, we have that file. We have homepage.html. Your computer is able to reconstruct the original message perfectly because both your computer and the server are using the same protocols. They're agreeing to talk in the same language. So it knows exactly where to look for the file. So now that it has the file, it can actually send it through the browser and it, and it gets rendered as a beautiful web page. And boom, you have your web page starting with the URL, going through the request, broken up into packets. The server finds the resource, sends it back to you in packets, and you reconstruct it. And that all happened in less than a second. That is the story of the internet from start to finish. So IP, DNS, routing, and TCP all work together to send individual packets over the internet. HTTP makes sure the information inside those packets can be understood. It defines the language for requesting and receiving resources on the internet. In summary, the internet is a packet switch system through which digital data, binary zeros and ones, is sent by breaking the data down into tiny blocks of bits called packets. Packets contain both the actual data being transmitted, maybe it's a picture, maybe it's a web page, maybe it's a request, and it contains the control information, the metadata that helps route the data, you know, the from address, the to address, the packet number, things like this. All of this is only able to work because all machines, all devices on the internet have agreed to use the same protocols for creating and reading packets. That is the story of the internet. Woo!